Welcome back to Detail Garage. Today we're going to be going through the V-Line of polishes to help you choose the right one for your polishing job. Now we have this Toyota Prius that's in black. It's full of swirls, scratches, and wash marring. So we're going to use the V-Line of polishes to get rid of those, restore the gloss, and restore the shine. Now starting off with the V-Line of polishes, we have two heavier compounds and two lighter polishes. So V32 and V34 are heavier compounds. They have harder abrasives. They're going to cut through harder paint finishes and remove deeper scratches to restore the gloss. Now along the way we also have V36 and V38. These are finer polishes. V38 is a finishing polish. It doesn't have much cut. This just helps restore gloss at the end of your polishing job. But V36 is a cutting polish. This has enough cut to get through most swirls and scratches on most types of paint finishes, but it also refines the finish along the way to give a better test bed for V38. So I'm gonna start with V36 because of all of the compounds that cut away paint, V36 is less aggressive. I can always get more aggressive if the previous step didn't remove the scratches, but I can never undo paint removal. If I've already removed the paint, I can't get less aggressive than that. So I'm gonna start with V36. I also chose to use the Torque 10FX Dual Action Polisher today. Uh, I chose the Dual Action Polisher over a rotary just because this is a little more gentle and it removes less paint at a time than a rotary would in the same amount of time polishing a car. So I'm gonna start with the Dual Action and see if I get the results that I want. I also have the full lineup of HexLogic foam pads and going down the line, the first two pads are cutting pads. Again, yellow is heavy cutting, orange is medium duty. So of the two cutting pads, we're removing a lot of paint at once. I'm gonna go with orange, just because I can always get more aggressive if I need to take out deeper scratches, but I can't undo the work that I've done. So I'm gonna start with orange. Green and white are polishing pads. These refine the finish after you cut away paint using the cutting pads. So it's sort of like we're um, Starting off with very large abrasive particles, a harder pad, we might get some marring left over from that step. So then we refine those marks away to restore the gloss with the polishing pads. Now again, of the two polishing pads, white is less aggressive. So I'll be finishing with the white pad and probably V38 uh, finishing polish for this paint job. Now the last three pads are just finishing pads. These are very soft. Uh, the blue, black, and red. These are for spreading glaze, sealant, or wax on the car. So these don't have anything to do with the polishing job right now, so I'm gonna leave these out. Now if your paint finish is very hard or if you have a lot of scratches that go very deep, you can also try a microfiber pad. We have microfiber cutting and finishing pads as well. So uh, microfiber helps give you a little more friction, a little more cut on the paint job. So to get started, uh, I'm gonna inspect the paint over here on the hood of the Prius and looking at it, when I look at the light, the light is gonna help me find any swirls or scratches. I look directly into the bulb reflection in the paint. I don't look at this pool of light that's showing up when I uh, shine the light over the hood. I look at the reflection of the bulb and looking around it, I can see the condition of the paint and all the scratches in it. So we were looking at the paint outside indirect sunlight and that's going to reveal everything in the paintwork so when you come in to a shop environment where it's a little more controlled say in your garage you'll be able to focus on a few defects at a time but if you want to see the true condition of your paint job pull the car out into the sun because the sun reveals all but i can see already we have a lot of swirl marks scratches and wash marring on the vehicle so i'm going to put the light away now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start by polishing just half of the hood. So I have some tape. When you do your own polishing, you don't need to use tape and you shouldn't use tape. We only do this for a demonstration. So you can see the before and after very easily. But if you did this on your car, you do run the risk of the tape bonding to the paintwork if you leave it on for too long. And if you do that, when you go to, when you go to peel off the tape, you may take some paint with it. So uh, leave the tape off of the paint. We only do this as a demonstration. Now the next step that I need to do, I need to decontaminate the paintwork. As you can hear, this paint is not smooth at all. So all that roughness is actually contamination and pollution that's stuck on the paint. And if I were to leave that on, all of that contamination would get stuck in my buffer and uh, would contribute to more marring and take longer to get any sort of good polishing results. So I'm using the clay block 
to gently remove any of the stuck on contamination. And the clay luber is helping this just glide across the surface. Now, as you work, you'll feel and hear a difference. It'll start off feeling kind of rough and gritty. And then as you keep scrubbing, it gets very smooth and sounds quieter. So you can use a clay block anywhere you would use the traditional clay bar. You can use it on any paintwork, glass, or in clear optical plastic, and even polished metal surfaces all around your car. So I'll put my clay block and luber down, get my towel, and buff off any residue. Now this is an essential step before you do any further detailing steps, whether you're spreading a coat of wax or you're doing any machine polishing, you need to use a clay bar to get professional level results. So now you'll be able to hear the difference between the after and the before. So there's a big difference in the smoothness on this paint finish. Now that we have the surface decontaminated, it's feeling smooth, we're ready to start polishing. So when you approach your vehicle, you're going to want to polish a test spot. That means you figure out what combination of machine, pad, and compound works best for your paintwork. Now you might have to do several steps. You might try the less aggressive combination. You might try orange pad and B36. But if you still have very heavy marks, very deep scratches, and a lot of swirls that are not coming out, then you would try to use a heavier compound, say try V34 or V32. You could try a harder cutting pad like yellow or a microfiber cutting pad and see what kind of results you get. But you only need to go more aggressive if the prior step didn't work. But going with the least aggressive combination first gives you a good idea without taking off too much paint at a time. So now I have my orange pad set up on my dual action polisher. I'm gonna take V36 cutting polish. I'm gonna place a few dots over the pad. Now the amount of polish you use, the size of the dots, is actually pretty important. So I'm gonna set it up with five dots of polish. And the size of the dot is actually just about enough to cover one of these little hex grooves on the pad. Now since the pad is dry, I also have some polishing pad conditioner. I have some in a professional bottle. Give it one spray. And this will help saturate the pad for any first up polishing steps. Drag my cord out here. So, as I polish, throw the cord over my shoulder. I don't bang into the paintwork. Now it makes sense to go in a two by two area as you polish. Any larger than this, the polish is not going to break down properly or you would have to saturate your pad with too much product as you go. So I'm going to go with a smaller area, spread it out on speed setting one. And then I'm going to work the polish on speed setting six, overlapping 50% on every pass and pressing just enough to hear and see the machine slow down a little bit with the right amount of pressure on the paintwork. So we're done with our first pass with a dual action polisher and the polish. You can tell that you're done with your pass once the polish begins to turn clear. So I don't have any more white polish residue on, I just have a very light haze over the painted surface. Now I'll go ahead and take my microfiber towel and buff off any remainder. In this first pass, we've got a lot of correction done on this hood. Now let me get my flashlight. Right away, there's a very big difference. There is some, there are some deeper defects left in the paintwork, but I'm not too concerned about those because one thing you have to understand is that short of simply repainting the vehicle, you're not gonna be able to get 100% paint 
restoration with any sort of polishing job. But I've taken out all the surface swirls and wash marring and light scratches that were all over this hood just from years of improper washing and normal wear and tear. So now that I have this spot figured out, I know that V36 and orange pad is enough to cut away all the scratches on the paintwork. So I'm gonna finish polishing this half of the hood with V36, and then I'm gonna do one more 50-50. I'm gonna tape half again of this side and then polish that with white pad and V38 to see what extra gloss and shine I can refine after cutting away the swirls and scratches with orange pad and V36. So I'm gonna finish up this polishing step and then move on. So I'm finished polishing the whole first half of the hood here. This is the first half of my test spot. I'm going to buff off any remaining polish, any dust. Check the results. So far, so good. We're taking out all the swirls and the deep marks that were all over this half of the hood. So now I'm going to tape off this half of this part of the hood and I'm going to polish it again with my second step. I'm going to try a white pad and V38 to refine the finish and get maximum gloss and shine out of this half of the hood. So I'm going to check if that's going to get the results I want over the whole vehicle and then compare and contrast to see if, if I even need to do that second polishing step. If it doesn't look much different than the half that I'm not going to do the finishing polish on, I don't need to do it over the rest of the car. It's a brand new white pad it's for fine finishing and painted services get it nice and centered up. And now my V38 finishing polish. Again, I'm going to use the same amount of polish, same number of dots. I'm going to tape up this half of the hood here for the second polishing step. And I have a fresh dry pad. I'm going to add one spritz of pad conditioner just to help moisten and lubricate the buffing pad. So same thing as before. I'm going to spread it out in speed setting one, then work the polish on speed setting six until it turns clear. So I'm done with my second polishing step with V38 and a white pad. I'm gonna pull the machine back, grab a fresh microfiber towel that I have not used yet. I don't wanna contaminate this surface with a heavier polish abrasive. I'm gonna use a fresh towel to take away any of this residue. And right away I can see I have a lot more gloss and a lot more shine on this part of the hood than I do over here. So now I know uh, as my test spot, this is the combination of the V-Line polishes that I'm going to want to use over the rest of the car. I figured out what works perfectly here. That was orange pad and V36 to cut away the swirls, and then white pad and V38 to refine the finish. So we're fairly satisfied with the amount of correction that we got just using V36 on an orange pad and then V38 on a white pad. But just in case you're wondering how much better we can get it, how much more correction we can get by cutting away more paint that's damaged, I'm going to bump it up to V34 on the other half of the hood on one spot just to get a reference, see how much deeper we can get to get all of those swirls and scratches and defects that are very deep out of the paintwork. So this is a, for instance, if our first step with V36 didn't work, we would try V34 on a cutting pad or we would go up to a more abrasive pad in an effort to get out the deeper scratches. 
So this is my original tape line. This is V36, this is V36 and V38. I'm gonna put on another line of tape and try V34 on the far half of the hood just so we get a great reference point of cutting away deeper defects all the way through. Now I also need to decontaminate this part of the hood because I, you can still hear this half is rough and contaminated. So I'll use the same clay block and clay lubricant combo. So just like before, I have five dots of V34 on my pad. Hit it with some pad conditioner. And I'm gonna use all the same technique with the machine. The only variable that I've changed is the abrasiveness of the compound. Buff off this residue from the V34. I'm going to go ahead and refine this half. Same deal, I'm going to go to V38 and a white pad. Try to refine away any compounding marks. Restore the gloss and shine of this black paintwork. So now we finish the second polishing step with V38 after V34 compound on this half of the hood. I'm going to pull the tape. So now we have a great 50-50 on this side of the hood for the second polishing step that we attempted. So I'm going to check out the difference with my work lamp to see we have a much different level of correction here even from the other half of the hood that we hit with V36 before the V38. Next up, we're gonna pull the car out into the sun to show you the difference between the untouched part, the part that was hit with V36 only, the part that was hit with V36 and V38, and then this half was just hit with V34 and V38, which uh, the heavier compound you know, should in theory cut out deeper scratches and more paint. So we're gonna pull it out into the sun because the sun reveals all whenever you're doing any polishing. So now you've seen the steps that we took to use the V-Line of Polishes to get the best results on the Toyota Prius. So you always want to start with the least aggressive combination of machine, pad, and chemical to get the results you want. Now the first combination we used, the V36 and V38, gave us great results, about a 70% paint correction on the car. But we wanted to take it to the next step. We wanted to see what would happen if we tried a heavier compound. With V34 and V38, we got about 85% correction on this car. Now, the only way to go even harder, I mean, we could try a microfiber pad, we could try yellow pad and heavy compound, but at the end of the day, I mean, if you want this car to look great, we just have to repaint it. So, working with what we have, using the V-Line of Polishes correctly, we got great results. So, if you want to learn more about any of the V-Line of Polishes, the machine, or the pads that we use today, check them out on our website. The links are right below in the description. If you want to learn more top detailing tips and tricks, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have over 800 videos showing you how to do just about anything.